Yes, let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we glorify your name this evening. We come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts, Jehovah Lord. Your servants are here, Lord, expecting to hear your word. Use me, Jehovah Father, as a vessel this morning, I mean this evening, to connect your servants with your word. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We may sit. Uh, I thank God for the opportunity that he has given us here again today, this Friday, a wonderful Friday with the showers of blessings that we are experiencing abundantly today. I thank God because uh, of his mercy and love that endures forever. My message is from the book of Exodus, chapter 28, from verse 1 to 4, then again from verse 29 to 38. In my NIV Bible, up is written the priestly garments. And I believe from the New King James Version, it could be the garments for the priests the garments for the priests. That is what is given as a title there. My theme is chosen by God. Uh, my question is, as we want to tackle this topic is, who is a priest? And why should he, or rather why should he wear priestly garments? We have seen the description from the, some parts that we have read. Biblically, a priest is a, is a mediator, or rather the mediator, who represents the divine being to his subject. And the subject here is the congregation or the person the priest is ministering to. And in return, from them to their God. When he receives the message from the person ministering to, taking the same or rather connecting this person to, to God. He acts as ambassador, a chosen vehicle through whom God has chosen to serve the people and represent him on his behalf. He administering the church seven sacraments. We have already seen our priest administering the sacraments. We have uh, sacraments in the church, seven sacraments in the church, and that is the baptism, confirmation, confession, holy communion, marriage, ceremonies that we celebrate here, holy order, and anointing of the sick. So basically, that is what biblically a uh, priest is. When we look at our immediate context here is, far, is in verse 27. We see in the last verses that Abraham and his sons were commissioned to make sure that the lamp in the tabernacles continued to burn in the Lord's presence all night and all day. That was the work that Aaron was doing just to ensure that the lamp in the tabernacle continued to burn in the Lord's presence all night and all day. Now, that is already an indication that Aaron and his sons were to be the ones in charge of the worship. Just like a priest is in charge of the worship, so Aaron and the sons were supposed to be in charge of the worship. So when you look at Exodus 28, it gives us a colorful explanation of what Christ has done for his saints. The scripture gives us a list of a number of priestly garments worn by Levitical priests. And it gives us a hint on a number of important things that Christ did when he assumed the mantle of a priest greater than Aaron. So Christ came and became a greater priest. 
than Aaron, as we see in the New Testament. Verse 1 of the scripture that we have read, we see that the Lord instructed Moses to have Aaron, his brother. I've decided not to read it again because it's a short scripture, which I think you can refresh on. So when we look at verse 1, God tells, okay, the Lord instructed Moses to have Aaron, his brother, brought to him from amongst the Israelites. Together with his sons, that man is Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithmar, the Lord chose Aaron and his sons. And this brings us to our point number one, extracted from this scripture that tells us that God chooses his people for his service. God chooses his people for his service. God tells Moses that it will be his brother Aaron and his four sons who will be chosen from among the people of Israel. We see Moses was set, Moses was to set them aside as ministers, as priests for God. Aaron and his sons were chosen by God to minister as priests. They were to serve God as high priests. In short, Aaron was to serve God as high priests while his sons were also to serve together with him as priests. Now, this time, priesthood was restricted to the family of Aaron and later to the tribe of Levi where Aaron belonged. The priesthood of Israel was not earned by effort or aspired to. Through ambition, it could only be inherited by birthright. So one must be born into a priestly family in order for you to continue being a priest. Because Aaron was chosen from a section, a particular group of the Israelites, and his sons were to join him, it was going to continue in that lineage of the Levites. Priesthood is not a position that is attained by character or status, but something that God himself chooses people for. Priesthood is entered into by God's call and invitation. You must be called. You must be invited by God then you lead to being a priest. Sometimes back I asked, somebody told me that there are so many people who have called themselves. There are those that are called by God, and then there are also those who have called themselves. That is why probably we have so many things that are happening in the world today. Now, Aaron and his sons were not self-appointed, like so many other religious leaders that we see today. Men who not seek to be priests on their own accord, but every believer becomes a priest when he or she enters the new covenant by grace through faith. We are all, in short, what I'm trying to say, we are all priests because of our new birth into Jesus' priestly family. You make a decision, you get into a covenant with Christ, you are a priest. We are expected to be priests, but there is what we call consecration or ordination. Now, God looks at our hearts. He knows us individually. His, his desire is for us to serve him. He knows us individually. He was looking at this, that invitation that I've talked about, by faith and invitation, God's call and invitation. He knows your heart. He knows your feelings. He knows what you think. And therefore, when he feels you are worthy to be one, then you are called. So God looks at our hearts. He knows us individually. 
His desire is for us to serve him. Now that brings us to our second point. God sets us apart for special service and gives us visible confirmation. After you have already been chosen, now you are set apart. When you look at our verse 2, God instructed Moses to make sacred garments, holy garments, for his brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. That was an instruction that was given to Moses to make holy garment, garments for his brother Aaron and for dignity and for honor. Holy here means set apart for special service. And this signifies the set apart functions of the priests to the holy God. In other words, priests are set apart and they have specific functions which some of them have already mentioned when I was doing the part of the introduction. Now, since there was something glorious and beautiful in the priestly service, the garments were also to be glorious and beautiful. And when we look at the priests that we have in our services, the gowns they have, they are beautiful. Amen? They are glorious and they are beautiful. So they are set apart. This was to show the people that Aaron was specifically set apart as the high priest and his sons as priests. They were to give the priests dignity and honor in the eyes of the people that they might respect his service as priests before the Lord. Now these clothes were to exalt the office of the high priest as well as beautify the worship of God. The worship of God has to be beautified. Now, who was to make these garments, the priestly garments? That brings us to point number three. God endows us with the spirit of wisdom and skills. Now, when you look at verse three, I want to read it from NIV. Okay, from verse two. Make sacred garments for your brother Aaron to give him dignity and honor. Then verse 3, verse 3, tell all the skillful men, the skilled men to whom I have given wisdom in such matters that they are to make garments for Aaron, for this, for his consecration, so that the, he may serve me as priest. The main purpose why God was doing this was for Aaron to serve him as priests. And therefore, the people whom Aaron was going to lead, together with his sons, will also serve God. Our point number three, I've mentioned God endows us with the spirit of wisdom and skills. Moses is called to speak to all the skillful men whom God has given wisdom in such matters, that is, spirits of skills. Now, these skills people have been involved, if you look at verse 27 and the, some parts of verse 26, verse 27, we see that these skillful people have been involved in the construction in constructing the tabernacles. And now they are called here to construct or put together the garments of these priests. The point here is that God has made us very different from each other and he has given us different talents and abilities so that he may carry out his will and work through you. He wants to carry his will and work through us for his glory. He promised a special gifting from the Holy Spirit given to the craftsmen 
of these garments, so that the garments to be made for Aaron's consecration. Uh, we have different gifts. There are people who are able to soil songs. When they come here to sing, that is already a talent or it's a gift that God has given some of us that they're able to sing and sing mightily. There are those that are able to do other things, even in leadership. Those are gifts that the Lord, God has given some of us. So when we talk about for Moses to look for skillful people to make the garments for the priests, the priestly garments, God knew exactly the kind of a person or the kind of people he was actually looking for. The garments are to be done to the glory of God, a practical, manual service which requires the leading of the Holy Spirit just as much as what we normally consider to be spiritual service. When you look at Colossians chapter 3, where our theme comes from, states overtly that all activities done as are unto the Lord are spiritual service of worship. And when you look at, and therefore, whatever you do, verse 23 says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Verse 24 also says, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. Do the work wholeheartedly. So these people, these skillful men, these whom God had already given the wisdom, were going to do to make the garments, the priestly garments, with their whole heart because they wanted to serve God. Remember, brothers and sisters, that whatever you do, do it wholeheartedly as to the Lord and not to men. The reward of inheritance is given for whatever you do, so long as it is done to please God. When you do things that does not please God, I will not want to say there's a reward for inheritance there. Do what pleases God. The work of these craftsmen pleased God because it was great craftsmanship. God endured a spirit of wisdom in these skillful persons. So here, God's specific blessings was the talent of creative hands to construct, to mold, and to shape. When God chooses you as a priest or as a leader, whatever service you are ready to give, he will reconstruct you, mold you, and shape you to do, to be what actually he wants you to do. In the midst of setting apart a group for special service in worship, God makes it clear that he cares and he elevates all aspects of life and all skills of people. All of us, we have a role to play and we should play it as unto the Lord. If you don't do it unto the Lord, then he will take it away from you. Verse 4 gives us the detailed description of the priestly garments that were to be made by skillful men for Aaron for his consecration, so that he may serve God as priests. And we have been, they are mentioned here, the breast piece, an ephod, a robe, a woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. The Lord uses us. He wants to use us. He's able to make you to be what you maybe you thought you would not be. The description from verse six, 5, 6 onwards gives us a full description of the kind of materials that they were to use and what they were to make when making the garments for the consecration of Aaron and his sons. 
I want to conclude. Christians should spiritually clothe themselves differently to the word. As Christians, we should spiritually clothe ourselves differently to the world. The world is looking at us that what message do we portray in our clothing? Does our clothing bring people to Christ or it is drifting them far from knowing Christ? We are to dress modestly because our body is the temple of God. Our body is the temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. So when we miss and do it the other way around, we are shaming our creator. We are to dress modestly because our body is the temple of God, which should not be exposed under all circumstances unless otherwise. It is the temple of God where the Holy Spirit dwells. We are to behave differently because we want to be united with Christ. Behave differently because we want to be united with Christ. I don't mean to say that you behave differently when you are at your house, you behave differently when you are at the sanctuary, or you behave differently when you are with your other believers. But see to it that you are already separated apart and you are set apart. And therefore, what you carry should be the face of Christ everywhere you are. Our lives should be an example of what Christ wants of us. Your life should be a testimony of what Christ will want Christians to do. The world should know that we are Christians by the way we live, the way we talk, the way we handle issues, the way we approach issues, the way we solve problems. Our testimony alone is not enough how you conduct yourself. If they can't see the difference in you, then we need to examine ourselves. Repent on the wrongdoing and come back to God. So there must be that difference in you. If it cannot be seen, then re-examine yourself as a Christian. God wants to fill me and you with his spirit so use your talents and abilities for his glory. You need to think of the talents he has given you and how you can use them for God's work in this world. You have a choice to either use them or lose them because he's able to withdraw them from you. If you are not using them the right way, he wants you to use them. The holy garments not only distinguished the priests from the people, but were emblems of that holy conduct which should ever be the glory and beauty. The mark of the ministers of the religion without which the, their person's administration will be heard in contempt. What I'm trying to say is, your conduct should glorify God and beautiful and beautify Christ. The mark of the ministers of the religion should not be compromised with the things of the world, but be those that pleases God. If we are not careful, then we will be mistaken or be misjudged. And that is not exactly what we are here and there for. That is not what the Lord wants. May God hear our prayer every moment of our lives. May God use us, help us to use our talents. He has already skilled us. May he work in our lives. May he work in our faith. 
May we, he work in our testimonies and may he make us to be a living example of Christ on earth. Priests are connecting Christians' congregation with their father. And that is God. In other words, Aaron and the sons were meant to work on behalf of God. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.